Hi, I'm Kenny with Structured Solutions, and in this video, I wanted to take a quick moment to show you some of the exciting updates we've made to our dependency analysis tools that will be coming soon to SSI Tools for Microsoft Project. So I've got my example project open in Microsoft Project, and I'm going to direct your attention to our dependency analysis group in the SSI Analysis Tools ribbon. Right away, if you're a current SSI Tools user, you'll notice that this looks a little bit different than it did before. So what exactly did we change? Well, for starters, we have completely rebuilt and reimagined what we used to call our trace tools. That's the tool that will give you the driving path to any activity that you select in the schedule. You'll see that you still have a button here that says get driving path, and that will still give you the driving path to anything that you select in the schedule. But the form that controls the options for this has been completely changed, and we now call this our directional path tool. Let me highlight some of the new things that you're going to be able to do with the SSI directional path tool that you weren't able to do with our trace tools before. Starting off, you've always been able to look backwards and get a driving path or look forwards and get a driven path for any activity that you're selected on. Now you have the ability to get both in the same analysis. So if you want to see both what's driving an activity and what that activity is driving in the same view, choose the both option, then click the button that says run the analysis. The output will be given to you in this nice, neat, grouped view. So here is the driving path to this activity preliminary design review, and here is the driven path. Additionally, we've added the option for you to be able to get more near paths than just a secondary and tertiary. In fact, you can get up to nine near paths to any activity that you select in the schedule. I'll choose five in this case, and I'll run my backwards or predecessor path to preliminary design review. And you'll see that the result is given to me in this nice grouped view here. Here's my primary path, secondary, tertiary, fourth path, fifth path, and so on. Let me pull my form back over here and I'll display all the tasks in the schedule. A couple of other things that I want to show you that's new on this tool is that you have the ability when the analysis runs to change the view and table that the output is presented in. If you expand the section called output, you'll see a checkbox that says change the output view to, and you can select any view that you have saved in Microsoft Project. You can also choose to change the output table to any table that you have saved in your project. This can be helpful, especially if you are running these paths for an audience. So if you're ever in a meeting where you have the schedule pulled up and you need to run driving path analysis or driven path analyses, a lot of times you need to present that in a nice digestible view for your audience, one that doesn't have all these different columns open and maybe displays the Gantt bars a little bit differently. The last thing that I'll say about our new directional path tool is that the performance of this tool is greatly enhanced from our prior trace tools, including things like options to get all dependencies. On really big project schedules, this actually used to take a while to get all the dependencies leading up to a particular event in your schedule. We have greatly improved the performance, so it only takes a fraction of a second or a matter of seconds, depending on the size of the schedule. I'll go ahead and close this tool. The next thing that I want to show you is a brand new button. You'll see that it says Get Connecting Path. So let me explain a little bit what that does. Have you ever seen an image like this? People who have been taught the critical path method usually have seen something like this, and it's always used in the context of figuring out what the driving or the critical path to something is in the schedule. So my starting point here is task called A, and my ending point is task E. What if I just wanted to see everything that connects these two activities together, not just the driving path or the critical path? Well. There's no way that you can do this in Microsoft Project or other scheduling tools that I know of. There's no other software add-ins that will give you this information. It's something that you would have to do on your own that can be a pretty cumbersome process. Well, not anymore, because our connecting path tool will allow you to see how two activities in your schedule are connected. It will show you the entire chain of activities that connect those two together. 
So for example here, if I wanted to see how the milestone solution engineering review is connected to the milestone preliminary design review in my example schedule, all I need to do is simply select those two activities, and then click the button up here that says get connecting path. And that will right away show me the entire chain of activities that connects those two particular points in my schedule. Just like with our directional path tool, our new connecting path tool also has a form that you can open that gives you a little bit more control over certain options and cool things that you can do. For example, just as we saw with the directional path tool, if you want to change the output view or the output table, so what you actually see when the analysis is done running, you can choose those options. You can separate out parallel paths. You can show the result with summaries. You can log the driving slack both from the starting activity and to the ending activity in this analysis. Let me show you how this form works if you wanted to use this. So I'll go ahead and show all the tasks again in my schedule. So if I wanna run that same exact path using this form, I'll simply select my solution engineering review. You'll see that there is a green circling border here. It's telling me that I can set from currently selected task. This is my starting task, solution engineering review. Then I'll pick my ending point, which is preliminary design review. And I'll click the button that says set from currently selected tasks. And now I can run the connecting path analysis between the two of those, and that will give me my result. Once again, I'll show all the tasks in the schedule. And next I wanna show you what we've done to our dependency tracer tool. So we've made some great improvements to our dependency tracer that give you more flexibility and control in not only what you see with the dependency tracer in the tables, but how you can navigate through task logic using the dependency tracer. So right away, you'll notice that some things are different just to highlight some of the key things. On the currently selected activity, we've added some more controls similar to what you would get from the task or task details form in Microsoft Project. So you can now control the task type from this view. You can control the duration, the percent complete, as well as the constraint of the currently selected task. So you don't need to navigate to a different view in order to be able to do that. Next, in both the predecessor and successor table, you see that we've added a count. So you can see exactly how many predecessors and how many successors any particular activity that you're selected on has. You can also see that the first column of both the predecessor and successor table now shows a checkbox control. This will allow you to pick and choose what dependencies are affected when you click on any of the buttons that are just to the left of the predecessor and successor table. So for example, if I just wanted to filter my schedule for my activity that I'm currently selected on, as well as its two driving predecessors right here. I'll simply just select those two activities and then click the filter button next to the predecessor table. And that will filter my schedule for those activities. If I wanted to add an additional one of those, maybe these two predecessors into the view, I can click the add to view button here while having those activities selected. And that will add those into my view. Some other cool things that we've added with the dependency tracer include the ability to export both the predecessors and successors to an Excel spreadsheet, a very common request that we've gotten from users. You can now export your activities, predecessors and successors into a spreadsheet, which will give you a view like this. It also gives you a raw data table view, which can be helpful to you if you want to make pivot tables or pivot charts from this data. And then lastly, on the dependency tracer, we've added more options for how you can customize the table. So a very common request that we've gotten in the past is, do we have the ability to see the ID field rather than the unique ID field? Right. So we've added this option here. If you prefer to see your dependencies by the ID field and prefer to add or remove dependencies by their ID, you can simply turn on the ID field. I'll turn off the unique ID in this case, and I'll save my settings. And you'll see that I'm now showing the ID field instead of the unique ID. If you want to see both of them, you can have both of them checked. 
If you want to get rid of some of the other fields, like the name, the relation type, the lag, or the driving slack, maybe for whatever it is that you're examining, you don't really care about those fields, you can choose to remove those from the table. You weren't able to do that in the previous version of the dependency tracer. One last upgrade that I want to showcase for you all is that we've now added the ability in our toolbox to be able to remove redundant logic from either your entire project schedule or just from the task that you currently have selected. Why would you want to remove redundant logic from your Microsoft project file? Well, on big project schedules, the more redundant logic links that you have, the longer it's going to take for the project to process changes. So when you get rid of those, it improves the performance of your Microsoft project file. I'm going to go ahead and remove redundant log logic from my entire project by clicking this button here. It gives me a warning just letting me know that I'm about to remove redundant logic and that this process could take several minutes. We've tried to make this as fast as we possibly can. I'm working on a really simple example schedule, and you can see that it happens really fast. Once the redundant logic has been removed, I'll get an option where I'll be able to download the log to show me what redundant logic links have been removed from my schedule. In this case, there were only three in my example project. But we've tested this on very large project schedules, project schedules up to 50,000 lines long and it is very fast and efficient even on those projects, even with thousands of redundant logic links that it needs to remove. I'd love to be able to show you more about these new updates that we've made and answer any questions that you have live, which is why I'll be hosting a YouTube live event on Tuesday, July 1st at 9 a.m. Pacific and a, another live event on our traditional GoToWebinar platform on Wednesday, July 2nd, also at 9 a.m. Pacific time. These will be open to the public, so anyone can join them, SSI Tools user or not, where you can see some of the new things that we've added to SSI Tools, and I can answer any questions that you have live. The links for both of those live events will be provided in the description of this video or on this post. Thanks for checking this video out, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on one of my live sessions next week.